prayers for our secondary call to worship, not that the first one wasn't sufficient. Um, in light of all that is going on in Ukraine, the conflict with Russia, to realize how fragile our notion of peace and safety is. So our hearts break over the sufferings that are caused and experienced in this world. So I think this verse that I'm about to read, which is from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, I think this verse is very relevant in that it reminds us of the world where there is no pain or suffering or sadness or tears. It points us to the kingdom that is to come, the kingdom that we're promised in our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. So please allow me to share this verse with you and receive this call of worship with our forever kingdom in our minds. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Amen. So let's pray before we begin. Gracious God of mercy and love, we come here to worship you today. And even though we're experiencing a lot of pain and suffering in this world, we know that you are sovereign over all our heartaches, sufferings, pain, and tears. So we still give you glory and thanks for being the Lord of all. And most of all, we thank you for gathering us here and giving us this opportunity to freely worship you and lift your name on high and give you all the glory that you deserve. So we ask your presence may be felt in everybody's hearts today and that you would work miracles in our hearts, transform our hearts, and give us the assurance of salvation and may that be realized in everyone's heart. We ask that this time of worship may be truly acceptable in your sight. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Well, so good to see you guys. Last week when I was here, I said, it's been almost, what, two months since I've seen you last time, but this time, it's only been a week. So it's really good to see you all twice in eight days. And as always, and I'm sure you know what I'm gonna say, it's my honor and privilege to be here, and I welcome you all in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today I would like to uh, continue on with our parable series. And today's parable is the parable of the lost sheep. Are you guys familiar with this one? Yeah? Okay, well, if you weren't, like we read in our passage, it is about the shepherd and the lost sheep and the sheep that were already in his possessions, 99, right? So let me read the verses again for you very slowly, okay? What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray? Does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So with this with these verses in mind, I would like to ask you a question. Have you guys ever seen or heard of the movie called Saving Private Ryan? Do you guys know the movie? No? no? Can you go to the next slide, please? All right, so Saving Private Ryan is a fictional World War II movie. So it's not a real story. It's a, a fiction, right? And uh, it takes place around the D-Day, June 6th, 1944. And this movie was released in 1998. Who was born after 1998? Raise your hand. 
Okay, so there are a lot of us, if not most of us, who were born after this movie was released. So, I don't know, yeah, maybe you guys haven't seen it, and uh, it's probably recommended that you don't watch it until you're a little older. But um, I'll spare you all the gruesome war details that are in the movie, but I would like to give you a little overview of the story of the movie. So like I said, on the morning of June 6, 1944, D-Day, the U.S. Army landed at Omaha Beach as part of the Normandy invasion. And of the many, many soldiers who were there that day were Captain Miller and his men from the Army Rangers Company. So those are the people that you see in the picture. Captain Miller and the Army Rangers, the prestigious super soldiers. Despite the heavy enemy opposition, they survived the operation and succeeded to establish a frontline foothold at the gateway into the war-stricken European theater. So I guess we can imagine what is going on in Ukraine today, war-stricken European theater. And while that was going on in Europe, back in the United States, the Department of War in Washington, D.C. found out that Private James Francis Ryan was missing and presumed to be the last survivor of four brothers who were all in the war together. So this person that they're trying to save, Private Ryan, was one of the four brothers from the same family who were all drafted into the war. So three brothers are confirmed dead. And we don't know if, saving, if Private Ryan is alive or dead. So the United States government decided to send a special team into France to find Private Ryan. And if he is alive, they're going to bring him back and send him back home. And Captain Miller and his rangers were selected as a special team to carry out this mission. And that's how the story begins. They would embark on this irrational and illogical mission and experience much hardship, including deaths of their own men. So fast forwarding a little bit, after experiencing a lot of battles and difficulties and conflicts, they found Ryan. He was alive. Praise the Lord, right? So what do the men do? They tell Private Ryan, hey, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but all your brothers are dead, and that's why we are here, so that we can bring you back home, alive. This is our mission, and you have the authorization from the Department of the War to leave your post, leave your unit, and go home to your families. And what does Private Ryan do? He stayed. He refused to take the easy way out, but stayed and continued to defend the village that he was supposed to defend with his unit. So what does Captain Miller and his team do? Do they just leave Ryan behind? No, they stay with Ryan and they work with the unit to defend the village also. And the mission was successful. They defended the country, or, or the village. Ryan was still alive. But this successful defense of the village and preservation of Ryan's life came at the cost of Captain Miller's death, along with many others. As Captain Miller was dying, his last words to Private Ryan was, earn this words. Earn this. What do you think he meant by earn this? He was telling Ryan or reminding Ryan how many people have died to save his life. 
So do not waste the sacrifice of the others that purchased his life. So he said, earn this. And the final scene of the movie shows elderly Ryan. So many, many decades later. This is, so when Ryan was in the war, he was probably in his late teens or early 20s. But the final scene, he was an elderly man, maybe in his late 70s or 80s. So many decades after, showing elderly Ryan standing in front of Captain Miller's grave, saying, I've tried to live my life the best I could. I hope that was enough. I hope that, at least in your eyes, I've earned what all of you have done for me. And that's how the movie ends. It's a beautiful story, isn't it? Heartwarming, right? And this is one of my all-time favorite movies. Because the whole story parallels, it is very similar to the message of the parable that we read today, and by extension, it is very similar to the gospel. The best nonfiction, historically true story that was ever written. So let me elaborate on that a little further. The mission given to Captain Miller and his team was to save one soldier at the cost of many other lives. It was just so irrational and illogical, and this irrational, irrationality brings up two thoughts in my mind. First one being, I have absolutely no doubt that no matter how irrational and unreasonable this may seem, this really is something that the United States military would do. And as a veteran myself, I take pride in serving in the military that supports such a noble cause. It is the kind of army worth serving in because I know that if I'm in the same situation as Ryan, the United States government would not hesitate to send a team of men to save my life. And I have no problem sacrificing my life for such an organization. Second thought, it makes us wonder 